You're watching your turn. If it matters to you, it's important to us. Parents are worried, and rightfully so, about the playthings that are supposed to bring their children joy and instead may be frighteningly dangerous. Millions of toys manufactured in China have been recalled over the past few weeks, mostly because of high levels of lead. What kid hasn't stuck a toy in their mouth? And these are huge, well-known toy companies like Mattel. The toys are among the most popular Sesame Street characters, Dora the Explorer, Sarge Cars. Just this morning, though, big news, a class action lawsuit filed by American parents against Mattel saying an apology just is not enough. Joining us today to talk about this, Bill Mitchell, an attorney interested in consumer protection issues with an expertise in benefits issues. Also with us, Dr. David Berger, a pediatrician with an expertise in autism. Dr. Doug Holt, director of the Hillsborough County Health Department, also professor of infectious diseases at USF. And Lisa Brakeiron, her four-year-old son Noah has been diagnosed with lead poisoning and she believes there may be a connection there with some of those toys. Thank you everyone for being here today. Uh, uh, Bill Mitchell, Americans can sue a co an American company who makes their toys in China? Yes, they can. Tort liability does permit that, and the consumer gets an advantage because there is often so-called strict liability, which means you simply have to show that the product's defective and it caused the injury. But that's not to say that people like Lisa have a, a clear, easy road at all because if you're going to do a class action, you have to get the class certified and there are many technical issues. With a company like Mattel, they're probably going to have the financial recourses to pay a judgment, but if it's a smaller company or a fly-by-night company, there may be no money there at all to mm -hmm. obtain. And even in the case of a company like Mattel, this litigation could go on for years and years. So I think one takeaway lesson from this is we want to have more inspectors and our government agencies to try to catch this beforehand. Remember, a lawsuit is really coming to catch an injury that has already occurred. It's better to prevent it in the first instance. Uh, Lisa, what, uh, what, did, what happened to Noah because of lead poisoning? What were his symptoms? What, what has happened to him because of this? Well, from very early on, he was very sick, um, chronically ill. And I noticed developmental delays from about the ages between six and nine months old. Um, he wasn't developing his speech and language properly. We had some severe, severe behavior issues. Um, we felt like we you know, were trapped in our home, basically. We couldn't go anywhere. But how did you know it was lead? We didn't at the time. Um, the doctors that we were seeing at the time were baffled, didn't understand why he was so ill. We you know, saw specialists, we saw ENTs, we saw allergists, and no one could really figure it out. Um, luckily, we were able to find Dr. Berger who over time was able to run some specific tests on him to determine that it was indeed lead poisoning. And you think it was toys he played with, chewed on, put in his mouth? What do you think? What do you trace it to? I, I believe it could very possibly be toys from when he was smaller. Um, because of the fact that his lead poisoning has been in his system for such a long period of time, um, I explained to other people that it's not showing in his blood anymore. It's now moved into his tissues which shows us it's been in his system for an extended period of time, what which you, leads me to believe that, you know, it, it came from a toy or possibly a bib or something he had in his mouth from the time he was very young. Dr. Berger, put this in perspective for us. Kids chew on toys all the time, and these are, symptoms are typical, and you specialize in autism, so you might have thought that a child had autism and said it was lead poisoning? Well, autism is a diagnosis based upon symptoms, not based upon cause. Okay. And so for us to, we look and we say if they have so many symptoms and behavioral issues, communication issues, social issues, then they are given a label of autism. But it doesn't speak as to what those different, and there's many different causes. There are genetic causes. There environmental causes there are causes that we can't identify at all. I think Noah has lead poisoning. Well we've been able to identify that so I feel rather conclusive about yeah. that. Yeah. And you think that do you concur with her that it is from toys? Well it seems to be a very large percentage of toys. We're now seeing the just a couple weeks ago the Tampa Tribune ran a story where they tested 50 toys. 38 percent of those toys were tested positive for lead. These were toys that were purchased at some dollar stores locally, Toys R Us, and none of those toys have been recalled yet. So for us to think that the toys, because we've identified on the recall, for us to think that that means the exposure is no longer happening, mm -hmm. I think would be a false misunderstanding because it's just, these are what have been tested. 
this is not what the big picture is. Right. And who knows, we don't really even know when the testing got started. Did the testing happen four years ago, five years ago, yeah, ten right, years ago? Right. That, go ahead, Dr. Holt. Well, Kathy, I think this is uh, symptomatic of a bigger problem, is that there was a time when we pretty much knew where our toys were coming from, who was selling them to us, yes. our food. Now this whole relationship between the customers, the retailers, the manufacturers, and the government, and, and what are our expectations really needs to be reassessed. Uh, uh, frequently I used to hear people say you can have either two of, of three things. It can either be good, it can be fast, or it can be cheap. They don't even talk about safe. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. We want cheap, it seems like. Well, we've, we're paying a price for that, and we need to figure out a, a way to ensure that there is safety in, our, in everything we purchase from overseas. D that is the big question. Mattel uh, says that two-thirds of its toys are sourced in China. Eighty percent of all toys are manufactured in China. What does your child even play with, Lisa? Yeah. Um, what, unfortunately, he hasn't had any new toys in quite some time. <laughs> but I do pay attention now to much greater detail where the toys are being manufactured. And it is very difficult to find anything manufactured in the United States. I have yet to find anything manufactured in the United States. Um, I did find one toy company that manufactures out of Germany. So I, I feel maybe a false sense of security there um, because it doesn't have the China label on it. But I'm much more aware and much more... Um, vigilant about what I'm doing. You know, you guys, this is very pervasive because I was reading that even though 80% of China, uh, toys are manufactured in China, let's say a company goes, okay, I'm leaving China, I'm going to Thailand or I'm going to someplace else. Chances are they're buying the screws and the plastics and other things from another China manufacturer. This is all-encompassing. There is hardly any way to get away from it. What are people calling uh, when they call the health department? What are they worried about? What are parents Very saying? Specifically that is my toy safe? What should I do with this? Uh, do I, can I get it tested? Do I throw it away? Um, the, the unknown is creating fear, mm -hmm. and rightfully and understandably so. Uh, lead, as an example, we used to traditionally know where it came from. Paint and dust and, and uh, you know, we used to have lead all over the place. But now, increasingly, it's, it's from these things that people never expected and you would mm -hmm. never have imagined. Mm -hmm. can, can a U.S. consumer sue somebody in China? Not very easily. One of the things we might want to start doing is to rework our trade uh, treaty so that U.S. consumers can sue Chinese companies. Now we can sue Chinese companies if they have contacts in the U.S. Like say they have an office here or something like that. But part of the problem is almost fly-by-night operators or just maybe have a little bit of an internet presence and maybe just a couple of mud huts in China and they're creating chemicals or something like this and for those it's very hard to reach and I think to do that we really need to be reevaluating our trade treaties. And again I think Kathy we need medi medicines, food, I mean there's this is a huge problem. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think I've read like 80 or 90 percent of all vitamins are manufactured yeah. in China too yeah. so uh, we'll take a break continue this discussion about this gigantic toy recall from China which by the way only represents less than one percent of all the goods that the United States imports from China. Just a drop in the bucket. Back in a moment.